On a sunny winter day south of Mexico City at Lake Xochimilco, biologist Luis Zambrano of Autonomous University of Mexico is meeting with local fishermen to talk about saving almost extinct salamanders called axolotl. Dr. Zambrano's lab is working hard to save this endemic species, but the fishermen's livelihood is partially responsible for the salamanders dying off. Although the axolotl have been put on internationally recognized endangered lists, it is not found in the wild anywhere else in the world, thus making the task of saving the species very challenging. On the drive to the lake, he spoke with me about the demise of the salamanders. General, uh, the problem is that the population has been reduced in a lot of thousand times in 10 years, so the population is going directly to the extinction. We have a research that says that um, that there, although Xochimilco has about 80 kilometers of canals, though these animals can survive only in very small amount. I mean, five percent of the, these kilometers. There was, there used to be six thousand per kilometer square, and now there are 100 per kilometer square. That the reduction of the the, dense, the, the population density has been in 10 years. This unique creature is an important part of Mexican history and culture. Aztec lore claims that the axolotl was a god who morphed into various forms when escaping from other gods who wanted to sacrifice him. Caught by the gods in the form of the strange salamander, he was banished to live in the lake. It was here that the axolotl became an important food source for the Aztecs. Other unique aspects of the axolotl are their ability to regenerate limbs. Scientists are studying this closely to see if they can mimic the trait in humans. The salamander is also neotenic, meaning that it does not change into an adult body. It retains its immature characteristics like feathery gills and aquatic lifestyle, but can reproduce in this state. The axolotl are native only to Lake Xochimilco and the now dry Lake Chalco, which was drained to prevent flooding in the 1970s. So Shimilko was also drained considerably, and the salamander's habitat is now just a fraction of its former size. Wastewater pollution pumped into the lake has also killed off the species, but the greatest threat now is non-native fish. The problem with axolotls is that the water quality and the predators, like tilapia and carp, consume their eggs and the survival is very, very low. But the exotic fish introduced around 20 years ago are what the fishermen make a living from. Because the invasive fish are literally killing the axolotl's chance of survival, reducing the amount of these fish is what Zambrano's lab is trying to do. A smaller fish population is actually better for the fishermen because the fish now have a better chance of reaching commercial size. After five years of working with the fishermen on this, they now see that it's good for both sides. Uh, at the beginning, the discussions were more in terms of why are you putting out our resources because the carp and tilapia is our, res our resource. And now they know that the axolotls are really important and can bring more money and more healthiness for the ecosystem if they conserve the axolotls and reduce their, their populations of, of invasives. So. Down the quiet canals of the lake are several axolotl refuges that Zebrano's lab has created. These short canals have been blocked off from predators and the water temperature and quality are monitored regularly. This is one of the five refuges that Dr. Zambrano's lab has set up to save the wild population, but they don't want to uh, bring in lab-bred axolotls because they could introduce disease that could devastate the wild population. There is a new disease called Chytideriomycosis, which is a fungus that used to be only in cold in very restrained to very cold areas and with the global warming it started to spread out around all the world and kill all type of amphibians. Because the axolotl is easily bred in farms and labs around the world, one idea to boost wild populations was to just reintroduce these lab bred ones into the wild. Inbreeding and lack of genetic diversity is the main concern. Zambrano is against this. If we started to reintroduce, there is no regulation at all for everything. So you can create a program of reintroduction. Everybody can create a program of reintroduction because it's very easy to breed them and put them in the wild. And that will create a huge amount of organisms that possibly are ill because it's very easy to contract this illness. 
Another of the axolotl refuges is on the Isla de la Muñecas, or Doll Island. This popular tourist spot is covered with dolls at various stages of deterioration. Legend is that the now deceased owner Don Julian started fishing dolls out of the river and hung them up to keep away the soul of a girl who had drowned nearby. Anastasio Santana Velasco, who is the current owner and nephew of Julian, keeps up the tradition while also tending to the refuge and local agriculture. He's helping the salamander to survive because es una de especies de las más antiguas y originarias de aquí de Xochimilco. Dionacio Eslava Sandoval, who was born on the lake, has now worked for 10 years on conserving the wild areas of Xochimilco with a local NGO. Se ha logrado, por ejemplo, from the first project about Ashot, they have established a very well established a colony to preserve the, this species in captivity. This colony has grown to around 2,000 and is kept in aquariums in a building on the edge of the lake. They are microchipped and can be tracked once they are put back into the water. The main objective of these actuals that are here is to recover the genetic line, the, the purity of the genetic line. The second step is the selection of the future reproducers. The last is to create the first actual production farm. What we are doing is to avoid the extinction of this species here in Xochimilco. Ashodotus are not so nice in terms of photo photos. I mean, they are not photogenic.